Yeah, we opened for nominations and Eggleston nominated um, Councilman Cook with a second by Roadwald to be the act presiding officer for tonight's meeting. Closed nomination. And we closed nominations with a first by Eggleston or Lindsay and a second by Bond. And vote. Anyway, back to the call to order, I guess. Uh, welcome to all you folks. We'll get through this the best we can. Okay, Emily, now do we want to do the roll call? Sure, Acting Mayor Cook. Yeah, Presiding Officer. Presiding Officer Cook. There you go. All right, Councilman Bond. Here. Councilwoman Eggleston. Here. Councilman Lindsay. Here. Councilman Roadwall. Here. We have five members present. All right, the invitation tonight by Chief Trustee. <clears throat> Father, Lord, we thank you for the day and all that many blessings, so many blessings, Lord, and favors, and we thank you for the beautiful weather. Lord, please be in this meeting, that thy perfect will be done. Bless our first responders, our troops, and their families. In Jesus' name, amen. Mm -hmm. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. All right. <clears throat> Action on the meeting, uh, minutes of 3-20-23. So moved. Second. No comments or anything? Good. Any comments? Any corrections? All right, Councilman Lindsay. Yes. Councilman Roadwald. <coughs> yes. Councilman Cook. Yes. Councilman Bond. Yes. Councilman Eggleston. Yes. Those are accepted 5 0. Okay, do we have any communication? Yes, sir. Um, the BZA hearing that was scheduled for the night for the habitat that will be at the next meeting on uh, April 17th. Uh, due to not having enough information to put on the council. They're not doing the board of zoning appeals hearing tonight, no. Is it an outcome of that website or anything that they were going to have to run? Mm, no. <laughs> if you'd like to speak, you need to go to the podium and give your name and address if you're at that point. We're not no, we're not at that there. point. We're not there yet. No. Okay, you need to wait. I just wanted to. Leave. I was going to leave if I'm not going to have it. I just didn't know. I sure. canceled plans tonight, thinking that we were going to have the meeting because I got the paper in the mail saying April 3rd at mm -hmm. 6 p.m. So if it got canceled today, I, why didn't it get put out somewhere? Like on that Facebook, New Carlisle Facebook page or something, letting all of us folks know that it took time out tonight to come here. Sure, but we'll do better next time. The law just says we have to announce it where we're going to have it that it was canceled. No, it's not about not enough people. We're still waiting on the required stuff from the county to give us like the site plan and all that stuff. And then too, we're still waiting because we need to know that to know how big the lots are going, the houses are going to be to assign a zoning for it. Tonight's meeting, meeting was just a variance. It was nothing really doing with that particular project as far as what the houses are going to look like. They're just going to issue a variance to build within a certain uh, uh, square footage. But until we have that back from the county, we can't present that to council. But there'll be further meetings down the process that have to deal with that particular issue. Tonight, they will be voting on, they will be voting on the purchase agreement. So if they pass that, then yes, and if it fails, then the project's dead. I but any other questions, we'll have to go wait till I, later I called on. the city today to find out for sure what was gonna happen tonight, and they said at least tonight you're gonna vote on. And that's what I just stated, Mr. Palmatier. They're gonna be voting on the purchase agreement still. That ordinance is still up, but the variance request is not gonna be done until the next meeting. They're going to vote on what tonight? The purchase agreement to sell the lots for a dollar. That's going to be voted on? Yes, sir. Oh, okay. And they're going to, okay. Yeah. You get the name to the record. Yeah, I got that. I was waiting to see if everybody was done. Okay, Mr. Bridge, it's your turn. <clears throat> Thank you.
Center discussion topics. We have a national opioid settlement. We have another opportunity to join this. We have a new deadline of 4-18-2023. Uh, so when it came around the first time, we decided not to move forward with it just because the use of the settlement funds were extremely stringent. You have to be very monitored with what you do with it. There's only certain things you can do with it regarding you have to use it for treatment, early, in, early intervention and crisis support. Uh, mother center treatment support. We just don't have that much of the uh, staff to monitor that, so we, just, we chose not to bring it to council. However, what has been learned last week is we can actually enter the lawsuit and actually pass those funds to the county. And the county, who has a much better uh, system of staff and uh, programs, they could use to use that for Clark County residents. So ultimately, it would be up to city council to decide that. That will be coming as an emergency ordinance next week. Just to give you an idea of what that's going to look like, so the city would get around between $17,000 and $24,000, again, that we would sign an MOU with the county and we would just pass those funds through. We would have to receive them, we'd have to create a fund, but then we'd just send them off to the county. So it's just more money for the county to use. The state of Ohio just got under a billion dollars for this particular settlement lawsuit. 30% uh, is of that is gonna be allocated directly to your municipalities. The late, last data I saw, which is on their website, only 118 cities have signed up. Now that may have grown since then, because that data was actually from 2020, but that is the latest they have on their uh, information. So a lot of these smaller places did not get the chance to do it, but now that we can pass it through, I think it should be benefit to look at. So again, we'll take co uh, council comments on that, but there will be an emergency ordinance for that next week. Um, should council want to do it, we need six votes to do with that. But again, it would just be passed through funds. Any questions? Do we have anything in particular in mind to spend that on? Well, we would give it to the county and they would have to use a set of, of funds that are approved by the state. So I have the list here if you want me to read it all. Oh, it's treatment, early intervention, crisis support, uh, funds that would address the needs of the criminal justice involved persons. Um, and then support for pre-arrest diversion and deflection strategies, mothered center treatment and support, recovery support, prevention, prevent over-prescribing of opioids and other drugs of potential use. And what they would do there is just offer training to the doctors who prescribe the drugs and then, then services for children. So there's only so much you can use the funds for. We can't just put in our general fund and keep it. Okay. So, so would the county get the 17 or 17,000 if it, they didn't apply for it? No. no. Mm -mm. Each entity has to apply for it on themselves. Each township has to apply for it. Each county has to apply for it. And each it's political subdivision in each county has to apply for it. So they just mm -hmm. want us to, so we can get the Well, actually, I brought it up since we could pass through and they, it's why if they could use the money, then of course we would want to for opioid stuff. Any other questions? Go ahead and respond. So what happens if this hot money doesn't get split up? What ends, what ends up happening to it? I'm assuming the state state gets it, or they reallocate it to the other participating uh, entities. Wow, well, I don't see why we wouldn't yes. do that. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. Sure. Uh, emergency ordinance at the next meeting, and this is due to two council members being absent tonight. So, anytime that they do emergency measures, it has to be voted on by at least six council members. So, if they don't have at least six, then we can't do the emergency ordinances. So three of those, two of those have been, that were supposed to be emergency tonight will be at the next meeting, and that is estimated resources. Uh, Fire Chief here always does a great job at securing grants for his department, and again, he knocked it out of the park again. He's got some grants for some air packs. So we have to do a few uh, legislative measures to accept that money. One is to uh, amend our estimated resources, and that just adjust our books that we send to the county every year. And then two, we have to do a supplemental, and that gives us permission to actually expend that money so he can go buy his air packs. And then the third emergency ordinance would be that national opioid settlement um, that was noted above. So that, those are all becoming next week. We particularly don't like to do emergency ordinances, but sometimes they are a necessity. Amendment tonight needed on ordinance 2023.22. It was discovered by the county that when we were editing our uh, ordinance that's in front of council for tonight, one of the decimal places got moved up and it rounded up. So if you look on that agreement, so the purchase agreement, I think it's under section one. It has the acreage of what is to be sold. Um, it is. It was reported at 0 0.118 acres, while the correct acre is actually 1.17. So that will have to be amended tonight before uh, uh, council votes on that, or whatever procedures you guys have to do to amend the ordinance before you vote on it. So pretty, pretty simple correction. 
Uh, Haddock's ball, ball lease, we are working on a new agreement that is better for both organizations. The previous contract still governs if we're just con concerned about that under Ohio law. If you have a long uh, established relationship, even though that contract may be expired, that still governs the, the relationship. So what we're working on now is just one that takes a, takes some responsibilities away from the leasee and then puts it back onto the city. Um, I'll be getting with Mr. Rodewald once that's done, just to go over with him and then share it with the rest of council at the next meeting. Um, electric aggregation, I spoke with Mr. Cook on this a few days ago. So we'll ask some uh, members of the audience. Um, so Bethel Township had passed aggregation. Uh, we had added before a couple years ago, but they ended it. So they apparently have it again. Now all New Carlisle residents are supposed to be included in this. So has anyone received a letter um, from DYNEGY about the electric aggregation? I got a letter from Constellation. From who? Constellation. Okay. And it was just a welcoming letter, no uh, rates in there. Apparently, it's going to be a, uh, a massive agent. Yeah. Well, the rate that they negotiated was 6.85 cents per kilowatt, which should be significantly lower than what you guys are paying now. Who, who was that with? Bethel Township. Oh, it was with DYNEGY. Uh, I guess it's also through Treble Energy. So I will reach back out to Mrs. Ludford at the Bethel Township to see if those letters have hit. Uh, she informed me of this back in February. So we're curious as to know if any citizens had got that letter yet. I don't think I got it. Yeah, yeah, for sure. So we were starting to work at it at the local level here. Uh, but when I got the call from uh, Mrs. Uh, Ledford, we put the hold on it because if they can do it, why? We're New Carlisle never seceded from the township, which is why we can participate in their aggregation. So I wasn't going to put it on the ballot, pay our attorney to do it if we can piggyback off what they got, like we did for many years before. Uh, so I'll again reach back out to Mrs. Ledford, and then I will update council at the next meeting or an informational email so you guys would have the information. Well, with the last report I got, they're expecting a hundred percent increase in the electric rate. Oh, I believe it. The utility rates are insane. But for us to do it, it has to be a ballot measure, which is kind of time sensitive and, you know, step process. Uh, so if this one doesn't fall through, then we will def um, come through. We definitely need to do that for the citizens. While we're on that, do we have the funds in the budget to uh, withstand a 100% increase on the lights? Because we've already paid through the auditor so are we? Are they going to come back and get more money to? Some I mean, we are we're we're in a contract with um, a company that supplies us at a certain rate. So ours ours won't be impacted. Ours won't. No, we up. signed an agreement. Yeah, I think we just renewed that last year. It did go up a little bit, but it locked us in competitively. We did that for our cities, both gas and electric. Our wastewater plant's a big consumer of both, so we were definitely on top of that. But our supplier is really good about giving us good deals, but we are locked in for, for a thing. We're going to have a slight rate increase, I think, at the end of this year, the next, and I'll, I'll look at that contract and inform council as well. Anybody have any questions in regard to this? Are you asking me a question, sir? I'm sorry. No? Okay. Okay, and 2023 fireworks contract, I did execute that. Display date is June 24th, grant out date is June 25th. That is the same weekend as our community garage sale. We had it the same uh, weekend last year, it turned out to be a great event. So go set up for a garage sale, then come watch the fireworks in the evening, it'll be a good time. And as I'd already stated, the Boys Owning Appeals meeting for 4323 postponed until um, April 17th, and that was pending vote counts on ordinance 2023-2022. And I say that because if council doesn't pass the purchase agreement tonight, then the whole project's dead. So that won't be moving forward uh, if there's no purchase agreement for the land. <coughs> Friendly reminder, Clark County Transportation Act Active Transportation Plan presentation. That's by Louis Agressa. He is a transportation director for Clark County Springfield T T TCC. That will be Monday, April 17th, here at a regularly scheduled council meeting. Uh, residential development for traffic study presentations. As I noted on the last city manager report, we did do an addendum to that to remove the Miami County development and to add additional intersection. So because of that addendum to the traffic study, we have to push that presentation back 
So that is now gonna be May 15th, 2023 here to regular scheduled council meeting as well. Um, I do believe that's all I have. I'd be happy to entertain any questions. Any questions for the city manager? <clears throat> I got a couple. Okay. Uh, Mr. Bridge and I talked a little bit today. Um, you want to update council on the uh, new shelter house? Yeah, so we did meet with some, uh, the guys are gonna be constructing that uh, about a week before I went on vacation. So they're gonna come back with their drawings. We'll share that with council. Um, they're gonna be working in some styles and design that meets the budget. Um, once we have those elevations, we'll definitely share with council, but they are projected to have that done by the summer's end. And so those of you who don't know, we did apply and secured a grant to build an additional shelter right over here. It's gonna be a little bit nicer than this one. It's gonna have a count, it's gonna have a kitchenette in it, all the all the stops. So we're very excited about that. And again, that was four hundred and thirty thousand, something like that, that we didn't have to pay a dime for, so that's great. Comment? Question. The new shelter is going to be four hundred thirty thousand dollars. So like four, I think that's what's a grant. Well, we're, it's a grant. We're not paying any of it, but that's how much. How big of a shelter are we building? A little bit bigger than this one. Okay. Just a little bigger than this one. It better be a lot bigger than four hundred thousand dollars. Mm, building construction costs right now are pretty expensive. <laughs> so, yeah, it's going to be very, very similar to size of this one, but newer. Who? It does. Thank you for bringing that up. It also oh, includes okay. the parking lot. Oh, I say so. the building. Yeah. It is. It's all crazy. Yeah, because three hundred thousand would be on the building. Hundred thousand. Yeah. I, I mean, I don't have any parking any. lot. hundred thousand on the building. But well, it's all inclusive in my world because it's yeah. all part of the one big bid spec. Who is the construction? I don't want to say because honestly, I, I, I'm getting confused with two different builders. So I will look at my business card I have on my desk, and I will send an information email to council. Second uh, question regard to the uh, community garden down there at the old school on Madison. Uh, where do we stand with that? So what we're going to do is they're going to be moving that up to Westlake. And then what we're going to do is the city's going to pay them $1,000 a year to have those, I think, eight or nine plots. And what that's going to become is first come, first serve for any resident of the city who wants to garden up there. And they don't have to pay the fee. So originally we wanted to just bring those in house and have them permitted through our city. But why would we do that every year when we have to do the manpower on that? We can just give the garden a, a grand a year to rent those. And like I said, it's first come first serve for any resident who wants to um, go up there and farm. It. Now, am I correct that I understand there's a soccer team that wants to take over that back area? I don't know about a soccer team, but it's definitely a, a big area where a lot of people do play soccer. Or a lot of our Hispanic community goes back there and they play really, really good soccer games. So one of the things we can do to encourage that is actually look and buying some field goal post for them at some point in time and make it a little bit nicer place. And also with the new development coming in, we're going to be working with the developers and kind of looking at Haddock's Field and how can we reconfigure that a little bit. Um, because they're going to donate all that land to the city and we got to figure out what we're going to do with that land. Um, so it might be a good opportunity for us to take a look at Haddock's Field and see if we can add another field there or a soccer field there as well. Do you think it would be a good idea if we're going to have that much activity down there to possibly think about a port john for down there or a restroom facility? At, at Madison? Um, Just model that. Yeah, yeah, I'll think about it. I don't know how long they're there for. Um, I'll, I'll start doing spot checks on the property because it, they're going to start playing again. It was clearly not active for the winter. Um, but we've never had any complaints with them not cleaning up themselves or blowing trash or anything like that. Um, but it's something def definitely consider if we need to. Next question. Mm -hmm. Have we come up with a plan for a retreat? Uh, that was, I talked to Mr. Mayor about that. That is something that <coughs> council is supposed to be doing on their own. So you have to have to get an update from Mr. Mayor on that when he gets back. Anybody else have any questions for him? Yeah, we got them off. <laughs> I would yeah, just I recommend not putting the portage down there. Committee reports. I don't think we've got any committee reports mm -hmm. that I'm aware of. Mm -hmm. If not, we'll go into comments from the members of the public. If you want to speak, go to the podium, name, address, and have at it. If you came and spoke earlier, can we get your name and address for the record, please? Yeah. Sure. 
Rob Skaggs. Okay. Last name is S C A G G S. 405 West Madison Street. So in regards to the soccer field thing, the bathrooms was a great idea, but I, they, they're there a lot, the kids are. Mm -hmm. I live just catty corner from there. I can hear them there. They're there for quite a couple of hours anyway. Sure. Has the city ever thought about keeping that land and turning it into a couple of soccer fields out there for these young kids for something to do? I mean, we have no, there is nothing here for them to do other than a lot of them, not everybody skates. Not the skate park or BMXs. I mean, we have a lot of Hispanics and they play soccer. And that field over there, if you guys look in the evening time when it's nice out, a lot of kids are there. <clears throat> a couple of soccer fields would be nice on top of that school, school ground. The city already owns it, right? So why wouldn't we just keep it, uh, use it for the potential of our young kids? Sir, the, uh, <clears throat> the city manager just said a few moments ago that maybe council could look into, or the city look into putting a couple of soccer nets up out there. For that's them behind to play? The, that's behind that. I'm talking about where the old school is. You're talking about behind the, in between the road that goes back to that house, right? It could be anywhere. I know there's a place on Clay that we own. Yeah. Yeah. We own all of that. I mean, if we're going to go to the extent in building some decent goals, why would we sell land when we can use it for, for our city? Use it for our kids. Keep our kids out of trouble. Keep them off the street. Well, there's, keep there's these still, guys happy. There's still quite a bit of land back there that we can use for soccer fields. And if I'm not mistaken, correct me if I'm wrong, sir, there should be enough land back there for at least two that I'm aware of, and possibly three, depending on how it's laid out. Yeah, they're only taking 155 feet straight back from the road. So I mean, my kids ample. left the city to go play mm -hmm. in other cities because the city of New Carolina didn't have nothing for them. And my kids are, my daughter's 21 and my boy's 25. And they still talk about how the city of New Carlisle and my boy left the city because of it. He don't want his kids growing up here because there's nothing here for them to. I mean, it's sad to say it, I mean, but I mean, it, it'd be great. I think if they could, instead of putting a habitat for humanity houses in there, use it for something for our school, for our kids. Like Mr. Bridge said, that there's there's three acres behind Haddock's Field now that is going to get developed for a soccer field. Haddock's course, Haddock, you're talking about down here. Baseball park. Uh, oh yeah. Okay. Yep. You know the thing that there's nothing for kids to do. Um, that, that, that I be smart Ellie. That, that I dump <laughs> hours and hours and hours. I don't even know you, so don't get smart Ellie. I'm me. just saying. Um, so there, there is, there is going to be soccer fields. Um, so, um, you know, well, sir, when you when you dig at, at, at the town. And then tell me there's nothing for kids to do when I can point to a place where there's 360 of them. Um, I didn't mean it that way. I, I, did, I if you listen to what I said. We have the BMX park. We have stuff to do. The baseball diamonds down there is for the leagues, right? No, it's a city park. It is a city park. In the I summertime. Mean, I mean, because because if you look at it after the leagues are gone, if it's a city park, why is the weeds? We not taken, it's not taken I, care I, of. I mow that once a week. It's not taken care of very good down there. That's why I was just cons on this side of the of New Carlisle. There's not much for kids to do over here. I mean, if you look, a lot of Hispanic kids they travel to come over here to play soccer. There was I didn't, I didn't hear anybody say we were putting soccer fields by the baseball diamonds. Mr. Bridge said that, said that there's three acres there that we were eyeballing for a minimum of at least one soccer field and a minimum of at least one if not two baseball fields. Two more additional fields? Yes. Okay, I, I, I didn't hear that. I apologize. I did not hear that. But I just, for the school side, I, didn't under, I don't understand why we can't keep it for the use of the city. I mean, I know there's probably money involved and we're going to get money generated off of it. But. So that whole parcel is still going to remain with the city except for them mm -hmm. or we're splitting off. So they're going to take 70... 470 by 155 chunks. I like this. Okay. And then we're, it's called a lot split. Yeah. And what we do, we retain the rest of that. They're only getting that 170 by 155 across. Oh, okay. And then there's 55 okay. feet of a right of way. It's existing curb cut there, we're going to yeah. keep because if we ever do something behind those houses, we have the remaining of what's on Madison Street School, including what's on top of that hill, and okay. that massive rectangle parcel, parcel that's uh, on the other side of Clay. Okay. So there's plenty of room. And we didn't want them to take all that frontage because we didn't want them to block any future access to what's going to be behind there. 
but the overall proportion of 70, it's 1.17 acres of like, ooh, I think eight minor acres. Mm -hmm. So the vast majority of that's still going to be used for the city. Okay. I Thank understand you what explaining. you're saying. Yeah, yeah. Sure. Thank you. My lovely Brian and I here live at 411 <laughs> West Madison Street, right next door to this gentleman. <laughs> uh, I guess uh, my lovely Brian just uh, uh, had a question, <laughs> and uh, so I thought I'd share her question because she's kind of shy. You know, she was raised here in this town. She lived here. She grew up here. She's shy. Can you believe it? Um, did you Regarding get something that Rob Andrews. said a minute ago, one of the things he's talking about. Excuse me, sir. Mr. Palmatier. State your name and address. Oh, I'm sorry. Please. I gave the address, but I didn't tell the rest. Uh, first name was Bernie, last name Palmatier. Palmatier en français, he would say. Can you, would you like me to spell it for you? P as in positive, A L M as in miracle, A T as in terrific or tennis, which I play a lot of. I E R as in Robert Redford or Roy Rogers. Okay, got it. You got it? Okay. Anything All else? Right. <laughs> Did I forget anything else? That was your question. Oh, okay. I'm five foot ten and three quarters. I used to be six feet until I started shrinking. Uh, my tennis shoe size is 11 in case you're buying for my birthday. Uh, anyhow, okay. One of the things my neighbor was talking about is something that actually exists on the north side of New Carlisle, but a buddy of mine who's doing a big development out in Montana. They put, call them pocket parks. They put in pocket parks in the neighborhood. And I think that's kind of what Rob was talking about. Pocket parks are something where people in the local area can walk to them and use them for something besides, you know. The other question, I guess, that comes to my mind, and I, one of our other neighbors who couldn't be here tonight, but I know he's very interested in this topic, he's concerned about the fact that there would be an extension of Henry Street and there would be traffic coming through that would be going kind of fast. But my understanding is that the mm -hmm. builder, the developer, is Habitat, is that right? Well, there's two, there'll be two. It's actually a joint project between Clark County Land Reutilization. They're building two houses, and the Habitat for Greater Humanity for Great, great Data, Greater Dayton will build two and I, You know, I'll tell you, there's an echo in here or something, because I really have had trouble. I, I know maybe The acoustics my... are bad. There's two builders. One is Clark County Land Bank, Land Reutilization Corp. Uh -huh. They're going to build two houses. And then Habitat for Humanity is going to build the other two. Okay. Now, my question is, is, could anything go beyond that back further? Could there be more building if there's a road cut back in there, number one? Number two, we're in the historic section of New Carlisle. And I can't see how you can maybe commit to something until you know what they're going to build. Until we, the citizens, can see what they're going to build, architecturally, mm -hmm. design-wise. Sure. So is there a way to put a hold on this thing until we can at least have that information? So that, that would be a planning board. So there's separation of powers when it comes to council. So count, our planning board is going to look at the site elevations and site plan and we'll approve all that. Council is in, in charge of the purchase agreement, but the time is of the essence. Um, as far as that being historic, it's not officially historic. There is no documentation that says it's historic. However, we have one of the first questions I had brought up when we met with the developers over here, for, for the two agencies, mm -hmm. is we need to incorporate architectural structures from the other houses to make it jive in. So they are, gonna, they are going to incorporate elements um, to, to make it match the neighborhood. They're not going to be just like, all oh, these stick out like a sore thumb. You know? But there is a process we have to go through, so we have to go through the purchase agreement first. Because they're not going to put forth the money and do all the site plan elevations and do all the construction until they know council has approved the sale. So normally we do all this. This is the process we do a lot of the time. So I guess the question then is, mm -hmm. if we sell it to them and we don't approve of what they've decided to build, is there any out? Is there any way to put a stop to it? I don't think we're going to have to worry about that. The houses will look and fit into the community. They, they are already... Yeah, how do you know? That. I mean, you just Because they, they shared elevations of what they can build. Pardon me? They, they shared elevations of what we can build, and I invite everyone who's here tonight. We had a presentation on this four meetings ago, two, two meetings ago. Go back to YouTube and watch it, because on that, uh, you'll see all that right there on that screen. So they've already showed us elevations of potentially what these houses can look like and how they're going to incorporate certain features from each house over there, because all those houses over there kind of look different. They're not all the same. And quite frankly, by the time these houses are done, they're going to be just as nice, if not nicer, than the houses are already over there. 
you know. So there are processes. So in place. It, 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 it was two weeks ago that you yeah, yeah. Meetings, yeah. or the two meetings ago, guys. Yeah. And I'll email you the slide, the PowerPoint, so you can have that. You can look it on your computer. Okay. Yeah. And then you can come to the planning board meeting. That's supposed to be set for the 11th. Um, if we get everything in time, if not, we'll do a better job of announcing the cancellation of that meeting. Okay. Um, but the citizens will have another shot at this, you know, especially with the site plan review and what those houses are going to look like. Okay. Council is going to have another shot at it with the variance request. I mean, every, everybody here is aware of the fact that some years ago, someone wanted to do Section 8 housing back in the, that 10 okay, acres back so there. Okay, so I'm going to actually contend that because I worked here at that point in time. I was a planning director, and it was never Section 8 housing. We actually changed the zoning. Once it was, it went from R, it went from office apartment to R2. We had all the citizens over there get R2 confused with the financial tool when low density residential has no financial terms on it. It was never supposed to be any Section 8 housing over there. R2 zone, if you know where Linden Avenue is over here in New Carlisle, big houses, big yards, that's what that zone now. So what the issue was is where the letter was sent out, the citizens got confused that low density residential meant low income housing. Density just says how dense or not dense your parcels are. Like over here, this is you know more denser than what it is what, on land. Yeah, wasn't Randy McGilvery involved in mm -hmm. that project? No? Mm -hmm. Unless it was well before my time, but I've been here since October 2012. Oh, it was before your time. Yeah, it was before your time. Well, it wasn't zoned for that, so it never would have happened unless they would have changed the zone. So that's probably yeah. why they didn't change the zoning on it. Yeah, well, they, mm -hmm. we, 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 we who were living here at the time oh. know that that, yeah. that was what was being yeah. prepared. And I also for. invite everyone to really acquaint themselves with the process that Habitat goes through to put people in these houses. They have like a 98% success rate. I mean, I'm a big supporter oh, of Habitat. Oh, it's great. I, they, I, they do a lot of stringent requirements to get into the houses they yeah. do. <clears throat> mm -hmm. Well, my lovely bride went to school with Randy McGilvery's sister, so we, we know about that other part that's there. Oh, gotcha. Well, <laughs> that's what this is not going to be, Bernie. Mr. Palmatier, I'm sorry. <laughs> Thank you for your time. You're and who wants to be next? Yeah, yeah. yeah I'm sorry. Yeah. Read resolutions. Go ahead. Resolutions. resolutions? I guess if, we're, uh, if everybody's done, we'll go to resolutions. All right, resolution 2023-09R, introduction, public hearing, and action tonight. A resolution approving and supporting the submission of local liquor option questions to part of the New Carlisle electorate for the November 7th, 2023 general election. So moved. Second. So an explanation of this resolution, this is just the first starting point of what we need to do to get the uh, local lecture op option on ballot for Carlisle 1 precinct. So what this resolution just states is basically it's a council support uh, that's saying that they support the initiative. So what's going to happen after this is uh, Jake, our law attorney, has given me a step-by-step -step guide. Um, but what this states is they, they, sub they support what's happening. Uh, but then more importantly, uh, it says right well, here in section one, I just want to make sure council is aware of this. It says any member of council, any council who is a qualified elector of the Carlisle One Precinct is authorized to serve as a, as a petitioner and to take necessary actions for placing the local look, liquor option questions on the ballot for the November 7, 2023 general election. It is imperative that someone who lives in Carlisle One Precinct has to sign off on a petitioner on this. Carlisle and it has to be a council member. Which precinct? Carlisle, Carlisle One. one. Carlisle One. So that's your downtown. That's Miss Eagleston. That's Mr. Grimm. Um, all they have to do is act as a petitioner. They'll do the sign work. They'll work very hand in hand with me and Jake to get the legality of it down. Um, but this is a group effort. Um, I am 100% behind this. I think it's going to be great for our town if it's done correctly. Um, so I know council had a vested interest in me looking into the starting point, and that's a result of this. Um, still some groundwork we need to do. It is time sensitive, so we need to get the ground rolling. This also states that council will hold a public information campaign in favor of that. So it's a way to just say this is what's going on. Uh, this is what we're, why we're doing it, and this is how you vote for it. Um, I maybe recommend that we do that if we have a work session for charter review. We just nail out charter review and knock down this um, public information campaign. But we do need to get the ground running on it. I think everything has to be to the board 90 days prior to the election. And please don't quote me on that, but I do believe that's a solid yes, number. Is it? Okay. Yeah. Council, I have a question. 
question. Is this going to be on the May ballot or, or uh, the March ballot? No, November. No, so next November? Or this, no, this coming November. Okay, okay. Mm -hmm. I just wanted to be clear which election. Absolutely. Uh, at the bulk of the vote. We have a question on the floor, if that's okay. Uh, I don't know if it's a permitted use. Central business zoning is really lax when it comes to drive with the businesses that are allowed downtown. Um, to say we, I don't know if it's going to happen or not. We don't have any proposals for it. So it, could, it could. They have to secure the land and build the building because right now there's no existing drive through So, I mean, that's a monumental task if, in me, but I can't say never is never. Yeah, right. But if it doesn't have to go through a planning board and all that stuff. Okay. Yeah. So, yeah. No, you're fine. Can you state your name for the record, please? I'm oh, sorry, Andrew. I'm sorry. Yeah. Yeah. That's so a great this, question. if I may, this this is just to to try to get uh, like Penny Lane uh, or any other restaurant that wants to come into New Carlisle the opportunity to to have on service liquor, uh, something that the city. Uh, yeah. Needs um, not so much like 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 your concern yeah. the drive through. I mean, um, technically, Rite Aid and, 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 and CVS can sell alcohol through their, but, but they choose not to. Yeah. Um, the ones in Springfield do. Um, so mm -hmm. no, this is really just to help develop the downtown to try to get entice um, restaurant owners and, and things to be able to serve alcohol on premise. Any other questions? Comments? I guess I need a motion. No, we got it. Both of the votes. Councilman Lindsay. Yes. Councilman Rodewald. Yes. Councilman Cook. Yes. Councilman Bond. Yes. Councilman Eggleston. Yes. Councilman Eggleston. yes. Uh, Pass this five zero. We have Ordinance twenty twenty three dash twenty two. This was intro uh, introduced public hearing in action on April third, twenty twenty three. An ordinance authorizing the city manager to enter into an agreement for the sale of a portion of the Madison Street school parcel to the Clark County Land Reutilization Corporation. And did you say there was an, an amendment mm -hmm. to this? Gotta have the so we need first. to, yeah. So move. Second. Um, can you tell me the numbers? Yeah, it's um, one point eight two um, one point one seven. Oh, just for the record, I want to get it right. Um, it's state, currently stated at 0 0.118 acres AC, and the correct should be 1.17. 1 1.17. 1 All right, and the first was Lindsay, the second was Robold? Yeah. All right, so we're voting on the amendment. No, I haven't made the amendment yet. We're voting on the ordinance. The amendment, and I'm just getting ready to make it. So you're ahead of yourself. Oh, I, okay, go ahead. I move to amend the ordinance from, I believe it's 0 0.018 or 0 0018 to 1.17 acres. Is that correct, the numbers? The original state is 0 0.118. 0 0.118. To 1.17. Right, to 1.17. Second. Second. Councilman yep. Lindsay. You vote on the amendment, correct? Yep. Yes. Councilman Roadwald. Yes. Councilman Cook. Yes. Councilman Bond. Yes. Councilman Eggleston. Yes. That passes 5 0. Back to the ordinance now. Councilman Cook. Yes. Councilman Bond. I've got a question, real quick. Go ahead. Okay. Uh, Randy, Mr. Bridge. You didn't exactly answer Bernie's question as far as is there, if, if they come to us with plans that council looks at and says, you know, this is not acceptable, you have to drop something. Council's not going to get that opportunity. That's a for planning board position. That's a planning board position. So there's no way to back out of this once we agree to sell them. Uh, um, I mean, I, I would have to ask Jake that, to be honest with you. Uh, this day does take 15 days to become effective, so I'd, my advice to you is go ahead and disapprove it. 
I don't think it's going to be an issue. It's for houses. It's for the betterment of the community. Right now, it's unproductive tax land. Uh, the elevations, I understand it's an area of concern, but we have been guaranteed they're going to incorporate uh, aesthetics of the other households to incorporate it. Um, so, but again, it's, it's, it's effective for 18 days. So within 18 days, I don't know how that works. It's a referendum, but you have to go, you can't undo an ordinance, or how does that work? That's not my area of specialty. You can't undo an ordinance, you just make a motion to, to vacate the ordinance. Uh, the, the presentation they showed us, what they showed us is what they're planning on building. It's gonna to have to be modified a little bit, I think, from what they showed us for the housing already in the area. Yeah, that's but, the thing. But I can almost, we're saying short of a guarantee that the planning board will make sure that is correct before we ever see it. The, the uh, planning board is uh, very good. The guy that runs the planning board, he knows what we want. He knows these ordinances. He knows about that presentation. And he will not let anything slide through that cannot be slided through. Okay. I just didn't want to box ourselves in. Right. But, but there, there, is, has, there is concern from. Right. It has to go through the planning and board. I'm, and I'm concerned about it too because that is a, yeah. a different neighborhood than the other parts of the Carlisle. Right. That's actually different. A few areas. You go around Scott Street, they're one type of house. You go down Madison, it's another type yeah. of house. And then, quite frankly, even the houses on Madison don't even line up to what they even look like from one to another. So it's a plethora over there already, you know. But Mr. Fields ain't going to let nothing get through that planning board, I'm telling yeah, you. Yeah, no, he won't. Yeah. But I understand your concern. Very valid. I'm good. And, 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 and I might add, too, Mr. Bond, if, if the planning board does not approve the plans, then it don't happen. It'll never get to us to, to say no one because he won't vote it out of his committee. Yeah. Anything else? Good, Good vote, man. Councilman Bond? Uh, yes. Councilman Eggleston? Yes. Councilman Lindsay? Yes. Councilman Rodwald? Yes. That passes 5 0. Uh, Mr. Cook? I called him first, and then he asked the oh. question. Oh, I didn't. I didn't hear him answer. <laughs> What'd you say, Bill? I said yes. Oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you, man. Um, would you like me to read other businesses? Yeah, today? go ahead. Ma'am. Additional city business. City offices will be closed Friday, April seventh, to observe Good Friday. Um, the residential trash can placement ordinance twenty twenty two dash fifty nine was tabled for thirty days. Um, do, they have Do I want to, no. we want to address that in discussion now and I'll be honest with you, I think that we need to have the other two council members here for a final vote on that. But if you folks want to discuss that issue, we can discuss it a little bit we here. We just discuss it when the other two are back and, and be done with it next meeting. All right, do it next meeting. My opinion. Meeting. Do you want to have a work session or a special meeting in addition to, because a trash can, I think we can do at the next meeting. That won't take that much time, but I mean, because now that we have to do the informational campaign for the resolution, for the alcohol in the ballot, and then the charter, what is the best way to tackle that? Do you want to do it on a separate night? Do you want to do it at the first meeting in May? Because um, now we start at 6. What are, it's really council, it's really your guys' call. We can do it. I think... I'll be honest with you. I think we need a work session to cover the trash can, the charter review, uh, and the public information campaign, and the fire stuff that we didn't get to. So the fire levy, we got to get together to discuss strategy and. We could. Um, but that's the fire and health levy, and I think Ms. Sexton is still the treasurer. She's still willing to do but, that. Uh, if not, we got to find a new treasurer. What's your thoughts on the work session? The fire and health levy campaign. Oh. I'm sorry, sir. What's your thoughts on a work session? I'm down with whatever. I think it's going to take time. You know, and I think what we get in the history of is we put these during regular sessions and other things come up. Um, I can go either way. I'm, I'm a fan of less meetings possible, but yeah. at the same time, too, we got some stuff that we need to get done because that charter stuff is also a ballot driven initiative and that has to be to the board of elections 90 days prior and we're only 
through, I mean, it's been months, but well, since last year, I think we're only through the city, man we're just now starting the city manager section. What do you think about April 10, on Monday? Um, I think I have something going on with the yeah, planning board. Yeah, we've got to advertise and all that. Yeah. Let me pull up the Shotter House. Um, we we can, I think we can, the trash cans can be done at the next meeting. We don't need a work session for it. Uh, it's just an ordinance. We either vote for it up or down. That, that's it. it. We've discussed it to death, I think. Well, I think there um, needs to be a little bit more. The, uh, the, the charter, we could probably do uh, first of May. And then the other thing that you mentioned, we can do it the second meeting in May. Well, give me some time because i got to research the public information campaign. What does it look like? Because um, really, really, the second municipality, I think, to do this because we, we're modeling ours off of um, New Albany. Whatever city did that before, so okay. we're going to kind of research what they did. What does a public information campaign look like? How much money is it going to call? Well, you're yeah. paying for it, so it don't matter. <laughs> well, the other thing I wanted to bring up was the fact that we've got the fire levy that's coming up May. on May the 2nd. In the past, we've always had a levy committee for about everything we've done. My first thought was to put together some type of a event downtown to draw attention to the fact that we need the yes vote on this. The fire and EMS are two of our vital, our very vitalist things in this community that do happen. For a defeat of this type, it would end up we'd take it back to the ballot. But I personally think that if we can come up with some kind of a meeting, and we have to do it fairly shortly because we've only got about 30 days to get this thing together, um, I, le I leave it to council. What's the rest of council's thoughts on it? I mean, as for having a meeting, I'm, I, I can't fit another meeting in my schedule right now. Uh, you know, as for getting public, you know, getting it out to the public, I mean, uh, I told you, I mean, I, if you want to do something, I think having something, you know, there's a, a nice green space right beside the firehouse. Um, if you're looking at incorporating some hot dogs or something, that's the perfect place to do it. Um, if you want to reach out to, you know, someone maybe a, a face paint or something to give the kids some activities. Um, you can set something out there to do a cookout out on the uh, that grass area. That's yeah. maybe a couple, get a couple of tables or something. Also, we got more whole boards and stuff. Yeah. You know, I mean, and that way they can see, you know, if they want, you know, if the Chiefs got the manpower and they want to go take a tour of the, of the firehouse mm -hmm. and look at this, mm -hmm. look at the, you know, EMS and, and, and the rig. Well, that way also too, we're right there at station and people want to see the equipment, um, to see what we've used, the, this because this is a renewal levy. Um, they can see what we've used their money for so far and why we need to continue that money to be able to continue this, you know. Chief, what if you and I and anybody that's interested get set up a meet, we can get together with you at the firehouse and, and yes, design this thing either one way or the other? Yes, sir. So if anybody wants to I think, bail in on this. I think the close the event should be as close to the election date as possible. Mm -hmm. that, that way it's fresh in people's minds. I mean we we had discussed either We we discussed what the last weekend before the election. Twenty ninth or even the thirtieth. I know the thirtieth right. is a Sunday. Um, you guys want to hit the absentee ballot so when's over to go out? Uh, well, well, in prior, I guess the administration because it's a May it's a May dollars. Huh? I didn't, I'm sorry, I didn't hear you, sir. Donate, the administration is going to donate $1,000, am I right? Well, that's what I'm looking at. We might have to do, I mean, we the city can actually put money towards it. If not, it has to be publicly raised. But I think when we did it last in 18, we had to pass a resolution to do so. Mm -hmm. um, but I know it's common. It's common for I think to, the last levy, mm -mm. didn't you pay for the biggest part of that, Bill? The sheriff's levy? Yeah, he wasn't a council member then. 
Yeah, I wasn't a council member. Mm -hmm. But in 18, we passed. Well, you weren't a council member then. <laughs> no. And I think yes, to answer your question. In 18, we, we put our own money towards getting the some yard signs and stuff like that. It was minimal. Yeah. It didn't cost that much. I actually started looking at that today, but I ran out of time. I had to come here. And so I'm going to pick that back up with and, and we Jake. Do, Is that you? Is we that? do need yard signs. Is that, is that you? It's our medic crew. We, we do need crew. yard signs for the fire levy and the can we have an upcoming police levy, or that, that's already passed? That's already passed. So we do, we do need one for the fire levy. Well, we need the health levy, too, because I think a lot of people understand what the fire levy is, but they have no, they have no clue what the health levy is for. And the health levy is very important. What we do is we get that money. We, Our general fund receives around sixty-eight dollars to $69,000 a year for that health levy, and then we just immediately give that to Clark County Combined Health Districts. And what that does is pay for the restaurant inspections, um, all the health center stuff they do when we get the health reports for people going in and see that. Um, and then they do the grocery store inspections. So that's the importance of having that health levy. Everyone knows what the fire levy is for, but the health levy is always that question mark. But again, it is a renewal. We haven't had any issues passing a levy in 10 plus years. Um, renewals are a little bit easier. The reason I think you should hit the absentee ballots Prior to that is because this is a May election, so you're going to have a lot of uh, senior citizens vote who may do absentee ballot. It's in a November election, so your turnout's going to be really small. So you want to hit those voters who uh, who, who are want to get there before the polls. So just keep that in mind. And I don't know when absentee ballot is, starts. Is that something that, like you put something out with the water bills? There's 30 days you know, prior. Informational in the water ballot. bills next month. Or? I we're due for a newsletter, so I don't know. I don't know if it's. Um, no, that'll go in. That, that spring newsletter is in mid-May, so it'll be after the fact. We can do an additional mailing. That's going to cost a lot of money. That's expensive. Direct, any direct door mailing like that's expensive. Oh, yeah. But I think if we just do a public information campaign, use Facebook. I mean, people historically support the fire and EMS levies really? and health levies. Really? About, now, if it's an income tax increase, I'd be like, yeah, you're all too late on this. How about, how about the uh, past boot that we've done in the past? Excuse me? Past the boot? Um, yeah, we, we can. It's called a, you know, a boot drive. We can do that. You know, and maybe just, you know, maybe, you know, uh, print out some leaflets that we can, you know, maybe hand out as, as cars are stopping just to let them know. That, uh... Another thing we do is every levy that we've had in the city, I've literally <coughs> took the section of town and went door to door and put door hangers on. I've done that myself to get the word out. Now, I did those for like the income tax credit. I went really heavy on that one. Uh, the fire health levy, I did like certain sections of towns, uh, just because I was doing it by myself. Uh, but that's another thing too, is every just go walk door to door and put door hangers in. Um, that's an option. It's, it's, it's very, it's a lot of energy. Uh, but that's something that I did before in the past. No. Yeah, we're exempt from one <laughs> Hey, when's the, when's the commerce market start? Is that in a while? As a recap, we're going to move the trice containers and charter review to the next meeting. And charter review to the next meeting. So at the next meeting, yes. you're going to have. No, I think the May 3rd meeting is a charter review. Yeah, May 3rd's charter. Trash can was. Trash is next one. Okay, let me write that down. So May 3rd, charter review. The next one's trash. In two then, weeks. Mr. Britt said you need a little bit more time to do some research. <coughs> yeah. I'm going to do a charter and public information campaign. At the five three meeting, right? Yes. So I can do my research. Yep. Will I give you enough time? Yep. Well, that's plenty of time. And if it comes to work. Where, where do we stand with the price oh, bid? Are we? Be talking to you guys next meeting about that. Okay. Mm -hmm. I did get the renewal numbers, and they are very, 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 very aggressive. I'm just I haven't analyzed them yet. So when I analyze them, I'll send you guys an information when we call out. Uh, go ahead, Mr. Bill. Bridge. Uh, when you uh, get information on the electric, I, I, got I forget the initials you said. Uh, can you send that out to us? Yeah, I got it noted uh, right here. Right, name, gonna... number, stuff like that. And yeah. I'm that gonna... way, well, five of us could probably put it on a Facebook page or something. 
I'm going to talk with Miss Ledford first to find out what's going on because yeah. these letters went out in February. We haven't got them. That's concerning, so I don't know if they're on the delay. But I'll send you that email too. And also said I'd send you the information our current that the city contract has that we agreed to. I think. But that's just for the city stuff. Not it is. But he wanted to know when it's right. going to increase. <clears throat> and that's usually a pretty good rate they give for the city. Wasn't that on a five-year? Well, it was higher. But then I went back and said we're not doing this, and we negotiated down. Right. Wasn't it like a five-year thing? Agreed. I think it was three years. Three-year agreement? Mm -hmm. Well, you still got another year and a half on it. Well, there, I think there's two increases in that three years, so that's what I want to look at. Okay. Right. <clears throat> Does anybody have anything else yeah. before I ask for a motion to adjourn? Move to adjourn. Second. Okay. You need to talk to them. Yeah, I don't... Mm -hmm. I don't want to speak. At, Mrs. Zimmerman, at the next meeting, we're going to talk about trash cans at the next meeting. And then the meeting in, uh, in May, uh, 3rd was it? Or first. May 1st. Then we're going to be discussing the, the charter review. And the public information the campaign. The public information campaign. So the, the next, 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 in two weeks, it'll be the trash cans. That's, why, that's what you... Well, there'll be other things on the agenda, but that will be that. Oh, well, I, Do you have an email address? Yes, her com her computer don't work. work. So you can look. Well, that's. I mean, you can. Is there anything in the office I mean, if you would, I, we don't print out stuff like that. I mean, everything's electronic, <coughs> either on the website or stuff yeah. like that. Is the library. Do you have you have access yeah, to any email has. whatsoever? <coughs> None. Mrs. Ever. The library has computers you can use. You can go up there and print one out. Janelle. Okay. Janelle. Yeah. Janelle, yeah. just give me a call. They'll walk you through it, yeah. Just give me a call, and I'll, I'll print you out of it. That's that would be easier, yeah. So you have a motion before me. Second. Who was the first? Lady? Me. Second was Eggleston? Yes, ma'am. Councilman Lindsay? Yes. Councilman Rodwell? Yes. Councilman Cook. Yes. Councilman Bob. Yes. Councilman Evans. Yes. 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 With that, we are adjourned.